Okay, um, this is a video for um, demonstrating how to install the latest version of the Java JDK and Eclipse so that, um, so that you can compile your own Java programs on your machine and you won't have to use the lab. So this will come in handy for the homework assignments and any other explorations you'd like to do with Java on your own or from the back of the book. There are a lot of ways um, that you can get projects to set yourself um, up with some things to try so that you can explore more of the language. And the more exploration you do, the more successful you're going to be as a programmer. So we're going to try out, uh, we're going to try to install a new version of the necessary components to create Java programs on this laptop. I had a, uh, an older version of Eclipse on this laptop. I'm going to go through the process of, of updating everything to the latest version. So it should be the same as installing it for the first time for you. So first I'll direct you to go to the My Courses site and look at the Resources tab. I've put links there for the necessary components that you'll need. Okay, I've actually created a document. Okay, so this describes the steps that you need to go through. It's installing your own IDE for programming in Java. You can um, refer to that, but I'll be stepping through it in this video. Okay, the first thing you'll need to do is you need to install the JDK, which is the Java Development Kit. So click that link. It will take you to Oracle's website where Java is. And you'll notice that there are a couple of different, a few different things you can download. The JDK is the development kit. It's basically, it's a version of Java that has um, extra parts that are necessary for doing Java development. So click download. Okay. It will take you to this page. The current version is Java SE Development Kit 8. And you will choose the um, to accept the license agreement. And you choose the operating system that you need it for. In my case, it's Windows 64 bit operating system and it will download. Okay, now that it has finished downloading, I'm going to go to where that is and I'm going to launch the installer. I'm going to allow the installer to run. Click next. Okay, these are the components it's going to install. I'm going to allow it to install in the default location. Now, if you already have um, a version of Java installed on your machine, you still need to install the JDK because there are additional tools in there that Eclipse is going to use to, um, to allow you to develop Java. Okay, I'm gonna allow it to install in the default folder. It says it's been successfully installed, so I'll close. Okay, now I have the JDK on this machine. I can close this, go back to the resources area for the course, and now I'm going to install the, um, the Eclipse IDE. The IDE is the Integrated Development Environment. 
which will allow you to edit and compile Java programs. So you'll click this link where to get the latest version of Eclipse IDE. Okay. So um, I'm going to use the Eclipse installer. And again, Windows 64-bit is my operating system. Once the installer is downloaded, I'll click on this to launch the installer. Sometimes it takes a few seconds to, uh, to load. Okay, so I'm going to choose the setup for Java developers. Choose an install folder. And I'm actually going to choose, I have a special folder that I use called development. Okay. This is the folder I want to install in. I'm going to create a desktop shortcut, but not a start menu one. And then I let it install. Okay, now it's suggesting that I launch. This is a this is a bit of a new experience for me because this installer is new. So this is not how I have in, in the past installed Eclipse. However, it looks like a fairly smooth process. And it looks like the installer is going to delete itself because you have an option to keep the installer. And here's Eclipse Mars 1. This is the version that's the latest version. Now this version may differ from other versions that you see in labs. I'm not sure. Um, the Java language will largely be the same, so there shouldn't be much of a difference. It allows you to choose a workspace, which is a place where your Java programs and projects will be stored. Um, if you have a reason to move it from the default location, um, that's fine. I'm going to leave it in the default location right now. Appears to be starting up successfully. Okay. And this is the welcome screen that you'll get when you start up Eclipse for the first time on your machine. There is some information here that might be of interest to you. There's an overview of how the IDE works. There's some tutorials that you could go through um, and other information. Um, but this is as far as this video is going to take you because now you have a working version of the Eclipse IDE on your machine if your steps went smoothly and you're ready to go.